We're getting short on time, but I want to pick up on children. Um, yes. And I want to also pick up on education. You're an educator at the post-secondary yes. level. You have friends, you have colleagues who are teachers or work in the education system. From JK to grade 12, right into post-secondary education, this has had an impact at all levels. Uh, but what would you say about resiliency for children and for educators, and, yeah. and for that matter, the family unit as well? Because mm -hmm. a lot of kids are studying from home, or, or there's that stress of mm -hmm. the COVID virus. Yes. So first of all, those what you just described, you're right. There's this a very complex landscape for educators all the way from like K to 12. So like kindergarten or all the way up through high school, but also for our trades and our college and our university persons as well. And what I think that we need to really reinforce is that emotional health matters more than grades. This is not the time to be worried about our children's grades. This is not the time to be worried about our children falling behind. I had a parent who reached out recently that said, you know, what happens if my grade one doesn't get the curriculum? I assured them there's lots of life and landscape between now and the future we're gonna be able to rally. And every child in the world is being impacted in some particular way. No one's falling behind right now. But what is happening is I think there are families that are experiencing food shortages. There's families that are experiencing big waves of stress. We have to make sure people are okay and safe then we can get to the learning. So my invitation is first to acknowledge the effort that our teachers are doing. What the teachers are doing is hard work. What the families and the grown-ups are doing to support the learners at home is also hard work. So give yourself credit for the work that you're doing. But also right now, this is not the time to worry about grades. This is the time to make sure we're healthy and we're getting through this intact. The reality is we're going to be teaching about COVID-19 in future history classes. So your kids will be on ahead of something somewhere in terms of they knowing the lived knowledge of what it was like to survive the pandemic of 2020. So the kids are doing real life learning right now, which I think is the most important. 2020 is a year that none of us who lived through it will, will ever forget. Um, I want to close out with you've got some exciting news. You're writing your first book. Tell us about yes. your book and when Aww. will it be available? <laughs> Yeah, so thank you, Jamie. Yes, um, one of, I guess you can say, the silver lining or bright blessings that came out of COVID as I finally finished my manuscript. So um, I'm working with an amazing publishing house out in Vancouver, page two, uh, and the book will be all about resiliency. What I did, though, in this book, Jamie, was I braided personal story with research and application. So it's, a, it's very close to my heart. It's very real. It's quite raw, but it's also very practical. So my book will be coming out uh, in the new year, and I'm very excited to share it with the world. I have four little things to say to you, and I'm going to let you pick up after I say them. I have, I am, I can, I will. Jamie, those are my resilient markers. When I'm working, whether it be with toddlers or all the way up with elders, I always talk about framing those four sentences. So here's a practice that you can do at home. And I, my invitation for you is, as a behaviorist, I know if you don't do it in the next 24 hours, you're not likely to do it. So take a moment just to finish those sentences. I have, who's in your corner? Who's in your corner that has your back? Or who do you have to protect? Who's in your family system that you have to look out for? Number two is I am. Speak that encouragement over yourself. I am capable. I'm a problem solver. I am resilient. What I hear so many people say is I am tired. I am overwhelmed. You don't want to speak that over your life all the time. You want to make sure that you're infusing that confidence because your energy will flow based on how you're describing your feelings. The third one, I can. Obviously, I'm biased. I can do hard things as a personal favorite, but I also think I can ask for help. There is no shame of asking for help right now if all of this is too much and no one should be suffering in silence. Reach out and ask for the help that you need. There's no shame in that. And the fourth one is I will. That's your personal call to action. What are you gonna do with this knowledge? Now that you've learned something new, what's your next step that you can take? Maybe you'll think about resiliency in a new way. Maybe hopefully you'll see that resiliency is something that's readily available to all of us if we choose to trust in our personal capacity. Robin, I think that was a great way to end this interview on those four wonderful tips. You have an incredible life story and you are doing some amazing things to help us all get through this pandemic, so thank you. Thank you, Jamie, for this opportunity of sharing. Take good care. I will, and you too. Dr. Robin Hanley-Defoe is a behavioral scientist and an instructor at Trent University in Peterborough. Today.